Hey guys, welcome back to another New World video. This video is going to be the ultimate money making guide using the trading post on New World. Making money on a trading post is incredibly easy. I really can't emphasize enough just how easy it is and absolutely anyone who plays New World can make money following this guide. In this video, I'll be showing you six different ways to make money and you don't need tons of money, you don't need friends and you don't need insider knowledge. Most importantly, stick around to the end of the video where I'll be giving some vital tips to optimize your trading this video is going to be for all levels, including beginners, people who have never used the trading post before, and there's also going to be some advice for the trading post veterans or late game players who also want to make higher profits. I've been making money using the trading post since the day New World came out, so for over a year now, and I've got tons of experience making money through trading on New World and so many other games that would be too long to list here. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all my knowledge on making money through trading in New World. From these six methods, there are things that absolutely everyone should be doing for both passive income and making big profits, and the other more risky strategies which may not be guaranteed money makers, but can potentially bring in much higher profits, which I've benefited from, and you can make some serious amounts of gold from. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first method, and potentially the most important one, is placing buy orders. If you don't know what these are or how they work, you absolutely must learn, otherwise you're missing out on a massive potential passive money-making method. This method is for all players at all levels, whether you've just started out or whether you're late game level 60. The thing you need to know about buy orders is that they're nearly always below the price that people actually want to sell their materials for, and on every server that I've played, I don't see nearly as many people placing buy orders as there should be. If you look at the footage, there's even some items like Rugged Leather, which has no buy orders for at the moment. I really can't believe this is a thing, it's such a wasted opportunity. So if you're just leveling up through questing, then you're just carrying around maybe 500 gold or 1k gold, which you've earned from quests. You might as well put your gold to work and start investing in buy orders. If you just started out and have very little gold, you can place buy orders on cheap materials. I'll be calling materials mats for short, and if you're late game level 60, you can place buy orders on much more expensive mats. This method isn't just limited to mats, you can place buy orders on absolutely anything on the trading post and profit from it. There is no item which is off limit here. I just want to quickly address the biggest thing that puts people off using the trading post to make money, and that's a trading tax that you have to pay when making trades. Whilst I personally don't agree with the taxing system in New World, it's fair. So we have to take it into account, but I know a lot of people who are put off by this and I want to show you why it's not that much of a big deal. I can place a buy order on a stone brick for 0.06 gold each and if I place a 10,000 buy order, it only costs about 600 gold and I only pay a 17 gold fee. I do have trading tax fee reduction as I have quite high territory standing. But the point I want to make is that you can't really complain about this 17 gold fee when you're potentially getting stone bricks for well below what people are listening for. Firstly, if you're on a busy server, the fast selling and buying items like iron ore, your buy orders can be outbid within a few minutes of you placing it. So I recommend if you're going to be online for an hour or longer, then you can keep being persistent and keep refreshing your buy orders during the hour to make sure you have the highest buy order on the trading post. But if you're coming on to just do your dailies and only have time to place buy orders once a day, then you can place it on the less popular resources where they'll last longer before they get outbid. Remember your buy orders will nearly always be outbid, but don't let this put you off because it's simply the nature of a game and those who have the highest buy orders up for an item will eventually get that item. But you also have to be smart with how you place your buy orders. And there's two things I mean by this. The first is that you should be wary of a current buy order and sell order price. The main thing here is that you want to be buying items for well below their selling price. Don't get baited by some people placing high buy orders. One example of this is one person on my fresh start server bought up all the knife moats up to 4 gold each and they placed a buy order buying knife moats for 3 gold each. I immediately knew that this wasn't feasible because life moats simply aren't worth that much. And because I was placing low buy orders on all of the moats for the first month of the server being open, I had built up a stockpile waiting for a moment like this. I began listing my life moats for 4 gold each, undercutting the previous seller, and ended up nearly selling 10k moats for 4 gold each. And soon enough, life moats would quickly back down to 1 gold each, because that's when the demand began to die down. The second tip is that people can drive up the price of mats through their buy orders. For example, someone placing a buy order for 10,000 or a calcamore at 1.5 gold each 
when it's being sold for 1.5 means they're trying to bait someone into placing high buy orders above theirs. You have to be smart about when to outbid the highest buy order. Another tip is look at the current highest buy order because if they're only buying two or a Calcomor for example for five gold each, then they're obviously trying to bait people into placing higher buy orders. And bearing in mind that because they're only buying two, they'll probably get filled within a few minutes. And the same goes for sell orders. Some people will sell two life moats for 0.2 gold each because when you go to place a sell order and this is on the trading post, it automatically enters the lowest sell price first. You have to look at the price of which the bulk of life moats are being sold for. So I realize this is a lot of tips for the first method, but every single point is very important. There's so many things people should be aware of when you're using the trading post. So let's move on to number two. Tip number two is look for the most expensive mats on the trading post, farm them and sell them on the trading post. Whilst you may be thinking this isn't really much to do with a trading post, it is, because the price of mats is determined at any moment in time by the price at which they're being sold for on the trading post. You obviously want to choose the most expensive mat which you can gather the most of in a short amount of time. I can't really give any more advice on this because it depends on your server, how much the mat is in demand, and the price at which they're selling for on your server. But I can say that things like wood and ironwood would typically be more expensive because they're quite rare and you need a lot of them for crafting. And not only that, you need 100 and 150 logging, and it's not easy to get that. But if you do want some tips on how to farm wood and ironwood for money making, make sure you guys check out my ultimate woodcutting video. Tip number three is flipping items, which sort of ties in with the buy orders, because you'll simply be buying up bulk products in order to sell them at a higher price later. But you can also learn to spot when an item is being sold for well below its value and straight up buy the sell orders. If you've been playing New World for a few months, you probably just glance at the trading posts for the price of mats, and over that time you'll have learned what the prices of a mat sell for during that period. I've been playing since release, and I know that moats in general usually worth between 1 and 2 gold each, some moats even less than that. So whenever I see moats being sold for 0.4 or less, I tend to just buy these up and hold on to them for a while while the price is high enough for me to consider selling. This requires an element of patience and judgement. If I need money quick, I may be set off for selling them at 1.5 each, but if not, the prices of moats always fluctuates, and if you're patient enough, they'll sell for over 2 gold each. Tip number 4 is try and obtain rare items to sell on the trading post. So far I've covered things like mats, but I haven't given you any examples of any rare items, and this in general comes down to knowledge, because you need to know about which items are rare and people actually need. For example, there's tier 4 rare mats like Azurite Trunks, which drop as rare items from Star Metal Ore. These can be used as an alternative to other expensive mats for levelling up your crafting skills, but not a lot of people would consider this as an alternative because they're usually quite expensive. I would place a buy order on them and sell them for a higher price. Now, my favourite example of this is the rare lodestone drops, like crystalline lodestone and loamy lodestone. I think not many people know what they're used for, unless they've levelled up their stone cutting. And even if they have levelled up their stone cutting, they don't place buy orders for these. Meaning, I've been able to gather hundreds and hundreds through cheap buy orders, and I've really been outbid on my server. These lodestones are valuable for crafting obsidian voidstone and runestone. You cannot craft runestone or obsidian voidstone without them. People end up buying them for the prices that are listed on the trading post, which is usually between 10 to 50 times more expensive than what I've obtained them for through cheap buy orders. And the people who sell these to buy orders often don't know what they are or what their true purpose or value is. And because I know what their true value is and what their purpose is, and now all of you guys watching this video know, we're the ones who benefit from this. So my advice is that these lodestones are probably worth up to 5 gold each at least, and I've had the highest buy orders on my server at 1 gold each, and often 0.1 gold each. So I highly recommend to anyone watching this video that this is an example of which you can place a buy order on today and profit from. And there's about 8 different types of these lodestone items which you can place buy orders on. Now, the fifth tip I have is investing. Holding items until they become more valuable. Now, I've tried this for a lot of different items and mats. I try to judge the state of a server and factor into account what the supply versus demand is. Now, I've made a lot of money from Obsidian Flux prices rising before they brought out the expertise system. And when they brought this out, everyone began farming the elite zones again for the elite chest expertise. Also started causing a massive influx of Obsidian Flux back into the trading post. 
creating higher supply than demand and driving the flux prices down. I was a big fan of the obsidian sandpaper as well for a long time, so I began buying it up in bulk, and I mean I own tens of thousands of this on my old server. And because it's used for both woodworking and stone cutting, it sort of makes it twice as valuable than aged tannin or obsidian flux. But at the time, server transfers just got brought into the game, which meant people flooded the populated servers with tons of them. And my investment didn't pay off as they're selling for about 0.2 gold each now, which is much less than what I paid for them. So this is just one example of one of the mistakes that I've ended up making, as I forgot to factor into account the state of the server transfers and that all people would be buying up the cheap mats in order to sell them on the more populated servers. I'll give you another example of a mistake I made that you can learn from, is that I ended up placing a buy order a few days ago actually for Orichalcomort at 1.2 gold each. And then as soon as I logged on the next day, my order was filled and I began seeing that the Orichalcomort was now being sold for about half of that on the trading post. So the moral of the story is you can learn from my mistakes and believe me I've made a fair few mistakes using the trading post. But the lesson to learn from this is, if you just wait patiently, the prices will come back down on their own. Especially for things like Orichalcomore, because I know on fresh start servers, a lot of people began farming the Orichalcomore as soon as they could, because they knew eventually in the late game it would be valuable. Whereas on the older servers that were released when New World launched, the Orichalcomore only became relevant about 6 months after the servers came out. And this was through an update which meant that Orichalcomore was actually valuable again. And what you'll find at that point is that because everyone is level 200 smelting and the demand for Orichalcomore much outweighs the supply of it, the prices on the older servers for Orichalcomore will be much higher than the fresh start servers. So with all that being said, don't let the bad experiences like this put you off from making money because I would still say that 95% of my trades have paid off and I've made a lot of money and that's quite a low risk rate for a lot of money making methods using trading. Right, so that's five tips. The last and final tip guys is probably the most risky, but it also has the most potential to make huge profits. So the last and final tip I have for you guys is buying cheap legendary armor or weapons with good perks which are listed on the trading post and sell them for hire. This is obviously much higher risk and there's a lot of things you need to take into account Firstly, the only thing you can go off of is experience. No one really knows the true value of armor or weapons with specific perks on them, only what people are willing to sell them for. So you have to be able to identify whether you believe an item could sell for more than it's worth. But also, you may be able to spot hidden gems which people completely miss. I have a couple of examples of some of my successes and failures. First, when I go to the trading post, I use the filter to select legendaries worth less than 2k. And I browse through them individually going through the perks. Some legendaries with mismatched attributes I don't even look twice at. Because no one is going to want to buy a bow if it has focus on it. Or an armor piece which has a mixture of strength and focus. Regardless of what the perks are. Similarly, pay attention to builds. Tank perks on light armor won't sell. And neither will DPS perks or healing perks on heavy armor. Lastly, an important thing to remember is that legendaries with only two very good perks will still likely sell for a lot more than what they're listed for. Things like focus, light armor boots with refreshing and resilient are always going to be very strong for PvP, regardless of what the third perk is. For best in slot, some weapons or armor you'll only need two good perks and a third can be average and you'll still be onto a winner. For example, I found some focused light boots with Shirking Dodge, Refreshing and Fortify Sacred Ground on the training post which I bought for 250 gold and a week later they sold for 80k on the training post. Similarly, I bought some light leg armor with Resilient, Refreshing and a fairly average third perk on for 1k and eventually sold this for 40k. So this is proof that you guys can do it as well and it all comes back to knowledge. So those who don't know how valuable the armor is will sell it for really cheap, but you can go and look through and buy it from them and sell it for much higher. This is just two good examples of how I've done this and after the release of this video, depending on how many people across servers see this video, it may not be possible to find some of these that will sell for 100k plus, but even some items you can even flip for a few k higher. Just like an armor piece selling for 2k, you can buy it, list it for 5k and potentially make a 2.5k profit after deducting tax. 
But regardless of this method, it will always be feasible because there will always be some people who will just list any cheap legendary drops that they get without really reading into the perks or whether it's actually good. And that's it for the six tips, but I do have a quick summary of some of my favorite tips which everyone should know about when they're trying to make money from the trading post. The first is that never sell to buy orders. You can nearly always sell your items for much higher if you list them for higher and weight. You can obviously undercut the highest seller and people will usually buy your items first, but don't forget that high demand items like mats, the prices always fluctuate. You can still sell them for higher. It'll just take more time to sell, but trust me, being patient means you'll profit more. So even though you see iron ore being listed for one gold each, you can still sell it for 1.5 and it might take a bit longer to fill, but believe me, if there's demand for it, it will still sell. Always check for quantity of items being sold to make sure you aren't being ripped off. For example, some people have 20 sell orders of one to two silk threads at 0.1 gold each. This is intended to make you think that that's the actual price and trick you into selling them for 0.09 when actually the bulk of the silk threads are actually being sold for 0.8 gold each. Another tip is you can use your storage space wisely. I always trade in the city with my biggest house in and all my storage in. If you're running low on storage space, you can actually use the trading post to help you store things. You can place sell orders well above a price that items would actually sell for, and your items would then be listed on a trading post and won't take up your storage space. If you can, join a company which owns the territory for 30% off trading tax fees and make sure you use the trading post in that settlement. Definitely don't be scared of a trading tax, it's often minimal and designed just to put you off. Buy orders will have minimal tax fees. Make sure you check the world map to see what the trading tax is in each city. It's set by the company that owns the territory and you want to do the bulk of your trading in the lowest trade tax city possible. Another tip is judge the state of your server. If it's an old OG server released from the start of New World, people will most likely already be 60 with 200 levels in their crafting skills. And there will be a lot more demand for the tier five crafting resources like Orichalcomor or Ironwood. So it'll be much more expensive on these servers. If you're on a fresh start server, everyone will be farming Orichalcomor from the beginning because they know it's valuable. So the price will be much lower on fresh start servers. You can also judge how expensive the other mats will be if you're on a fresh start because you can go on elite runs, you can see how many people are doing them with you, and you can judge how active your server is. It's all about trusting your judgement and judging the state of influx of certain mats into the training post. Whenever you level up your territory standing, always increase storage space. Another tip is so you can place large buy orders for cheap mats and keep getting increased amounts of them well above and beyond your maximum storage limits for that settlement. For example, I can place 5 buy orders for 10,000 iron hides each, and once they fill, I'll keep getting iron hide into that settlement. Iron hide will always be valuable because you can convert it to scar hide and smaller hide, and all of these buy orders got filled, so I'm sitting on at least 50,000 iron hides, which are now selling for 0.5 gold each, so it's already a 10 times profit if I were to try and sell them now. That's it for this video, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if this video helped you out at all.